a red and white postcard for you today. One is York and one is Lancaster. But we're in neither place, but we are coming from the Wars of the Roses. <laughs> Now, Bernie, this is very soggy and boggy. We're here in the bloody meadow. Was it like this then? Uh, pretty much so, yes, but um, probably drier back in 1471. It was a dry season, the May of 1471, apparently, according to the man who... Chronicled it? Chronicled it with uh, King Edward, yes, who came in with King Edward's army. Let's tell everybody what we're on about. We're in Tewkesbury. We're uh, <coughs> half a mile out of the town. You brought me to this bloody meadow. What was going on before these armies met here? Give us the scenario, set it up for us. And basically there were two kings in England. Henry VI, who was totally incompetent, and Edward IV, who was a sort of distant cousin, who had an equal claim to the throne, or at least he thought he did. And they fought sporadically for 15 years over the throne of England. Um, Edward took it in a great battle at Towton. Yorkshire. Uh, yes. Know about that, yes. Huge bloodletting. Mm -hmm. mm. And poor old King Henry was on the run for a while, then he was captured, and then he was banged up in the Tower of London for ten years. And Edward became King of England. He was a usurper king. Now, people would know this as the War of the Roses. They would, yeah. Uh, you are carrying a sword of the roses. Yeah. Which one are you fighting for, York? Yorkist? Oh, or no, Lanc I'm, I'm Lancaster. Purely, um, a Gloucestershire purely man. impartial. So the two armies met here. They encamped the day before? Um, well, the, uh, the Lancastrians uh, get here first. Um, basically, the, um, the old king was let out of the tower very briefly by Warwick the Kingmaker, who was a very well known 15th century yes. person. Manipulator, had, yep. politician, Machiavellian. Yep. Uh, he'd, he'd, he'd originally supported Edward, who was his own cousin, and then he fell out with him, as these people do. So he decided to get poor old King Henry out of the tower and stick him back on the throne. So this results in a great crisis and a civil war. And this brings two great armies into the field, and they chase each other all, all the way around the West Country, and the Lancastrians are chased to here. They wanted to get into Wales. They wanted to cross the Severn into Wales to unite with their Welsh followers, but uh, they couldn't get across the, uh, the bridge at Gloucester. So they come here, they're hoping to get a river crossing, but they run out of time. So they get here on May the 3rd, late afternoon, exhausted, and realise they're going to they're gonna have to stand and fight here. And King Edward is coming on a pace. King Edward was very fast on the march. He's a very good soldier. So really, their backs are out of the wall here. So they camp just up the way there, Amazing. in a great close called the Gastons, and await King Edward's... Uh, oncoming of the next day. What happens then after? What is um, the result? A, a total victory for King Edward. Um, he's regained his throne. Um, he was very good at this. He was very good in a crisis. He was often a lazy man in peace, but in a crisis he acted very decisively, and he did it again here. He did it here for the last time. So Tewkesbury then was his finale. Pretty his much. big moment. As a, as, as a military man, as a decisive military man, this is really when he regains his throne and from then on he's pretty well secure because the Lancastrian claimant to the throne, the young prince, poor old King Henry's 18-year-old son, is dead on the field. So Edward has no, no firm com competition anymore. <laughs> 